The velocity time graph shows the motion of a particle moving in a straight line. Calculate the acceleration during each part of the journey. Draw an acceleration time graph on the same axis. Calculate the displacement and the total distance traveled by the particle and explain what, what happens to the particle when t is equal to 12.5 seconds. Okay, acceleration on a velocity time graph, acceleration is represented by the gradient of the graph. So we've got three distinct parts of the journey, so we're going to label them. So from O to A, from A to B, and then from B to C. Then from O to A, the gradient will be... This is 9, and the time here is 3. So the gradient here is going to be 9 divided by 3. So it's 9 metres per second, because that's the unit of uh, velocity, divided by 3 seconds, because it's the unit of time. So you need to take care with your units here. 9 divided by 3 is 3 metres per second squared, because you've got metres per second divided by seconds. So it's metres per second squared or it could be written as metres per second to the power of minus 2. Now, from A to B, the, there is no change in velocity. It has the same velocity for between 3 and 8 seconds. Uh, that, therefore, it will have a, an acceleration of 0 metres per second squared. Then, in the final part of the journey, we notice that the gradient is negative. So A will be, so drawing our little triangle, this will be 6 seconds from 9 to uh, 4. Sorry, from 8 to 14. And then this is going downwards. So as it's going downwards, we treat this from minus 12. It's going from 9 down to minus 3. So it's going downwards. So this gives a negative uh, acceleration, so it's t minus 12, minus 12 metres per second divided by, minus 12 metres per second divided by 6 seconds, which gives an acceleration of minus 2 metres per second squared. Right, if we uh, should note that acceleration is a vector quantity, so it has um, magnitude and direction, so what happens between A B to this point here is that it is acting against the velocity and therefore the particle is slowing down. And then at this particular point, as we should look in part D, it will actually change direction. But the acceleration is still negative and the velocity is negative. So here it is actually speeding up. So note, when the velocity is positive and a negative acceleration, it means the particle is slowing down, i.e. the acceleration is acting against the velocity. In the second part here, when the velocity is negative, a negative acceleration is acting with it, because it's both in acting in the same direction, so it's um, speeding up. So what happens is that the particle slows down to zero and then uh, goes in the opposite direction. And, but it's speeding up. Okay, so acceleration uh, changes from 3 metres per second to 0 metres per second and to minus 2 metres per second. So we're going to draw this on the same graph. We now make the vertical axis uh, representing a metres per second. So to do that, I've got this uh, GeoGebra applet. So here is our original graph. Now the link to this GeoGebra applet I will put in the notes of the video. If we click the uh, red one here, what happens is we get the acceleration graph. So go and change the axis as well to make it A. So it goes from uh, three meters per second, jumps down to zero. Okay, and then the acceleration is negative so it's slowing down but when it gets to this particular point again it ch the particle actually changes direction and speeds up in the opposite direction 
minus 2 meters per second squared. So this is the graph of the of the acceleration of the particle according from the graph of the velocity. Right, going back to do the next part, so there is the graph, okay, so the acceleration graph is represented by those three parts here. Uh, it sort of jumps, so these are not part of it, so these are sort of entered as the dashed lines. Okay, and the displacement is represented by the area between the graph and the time on a velocity time uh, graph. Uh, so we've got to be a little bit careful here. Okay, so we go back to our applet. So here is our velocity time graph. Remember, this is the acceleration graph. Let's take that off for a minute. Now, if we click this, we will get a slider. Again, this app I'll put in the notes of the video. Now, so at the moment, t is equal to zero. So the area is represented, so the distance is represent or displacement, sorry, is represented by the area under the graph. Now we notice that when we get to this 12.5, the displacement is going to be 78.75. However, at this particular point, we can see that the displacement has actually gone down. So the particles actually move backwards. Okay, so the displacement will be 76.5. So basically this area here is positive and this area here is negative. If we wanted to calculate the, the total distance, then we'd have to treat this one as being positive. So the total distance travelled would be 81 metres, but the displacement from the uh, origin will be 76.5 metres. So going back to this, so here is my uh, graph. Okay, so you would, would given the graph, you'd have to calculate the area. Remember, this is positive and this is a negative area. So the area of the trapezium, because this is the shape that we have, so you should know how to find the area of a trapezium. So it's going to, this length here is 12.5, this length is 5, so you add 12.5 plus 5, and then you multiply by the vertical height, which is 9, and then divide by 2. That gives you 78.75 for this bit here. And then you need to find the area of the triangle CDE, CE is 1.5, but ED is minus 3, minus because it's underneath the axis. So the area of a triangle is half times 1.5 times minus 3, which is minus 2.25 metres, which will give the, for displacement. Now for displacement, you just took 78.75 plus minus 2.25 which gives you 76.5 meters is what the software gives us but for distance you have anything that's negative you make it positive so the displacement uh, distance will be sorry 78.75 plus 2.25 so you just ignore the minus sign and you get 81 meters Okay, and then we're asked to uh, consider when t is 12.5, so here is everything on the same graph. This is the point where t is equal to uh, 12.5. So what I've told you here is at this point the velocity becomes zero, so it stops momentarily and then changes direction. So here the particle is slowing down, stops, but then the particle uh, accelerates in the opposite direction. Okay, so the acceleration is working against the velocity here, and here the acceleration is working with the velocity because they're both in the negative direction. So at this particular point, the particle will change direction. Okay, so this has been a video to show you about uh, acceleration and displacement and distance from a velocity time graph. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching and I remind you that the GeoGebra link is in the notes of the video. Thank you very much.